Hello class. Today we are going to continue talking about geometric proofs. All right. And we're going to have some more theorems and stuff too. But first we want to talk about proofs. In the previous video we looked at two column proofs. Right? We had statements on the left, reasons on the right. And that was just one way of organizing our thoughts and showing step by step how we came up with our conclusions. In this lesson, this video, we're going to talk about two other kinds of proofs briefly. Uh, one of those is the flowchart proof, also called a flow proof. And this uses boxes and arrows and a nice flowchart to show your logical argument. And it's very visual. It's very good at showing how you came to your con conclusion, how the flow of the thought process goes. The other one we have is the paragraph proof. And there's no no columns, there's no boxes, there's no arrows. You just write down your thought process. Just write it down, write it what you're thinking. Okay, so uh, we're all going to have some more theorems, but let's look at some proofs first. Okay, so what we're going to do here, complete the flowchart proof, and then we're going to write a two-column proof. I'm going to show you kind of how these work. So in a flowchart proof, first thing you notice right away, we have bubbles, we have arrows, we have boxes, things like that. Okay, So what we're going to do, we are given that angle ACB and angle ACD are supplementary. Okay, So ACB and ACD are supplementary. We are given that angle EGF and angle ACD are supplementary. So EGF is supplementary to ACD. What we want to prove is that angle ACB is congruent to angle EGF. Okay, so we want to prove that this angle is congruent to that angle. So, here we go. Start off with our givens. So when we do this, we take our given statement, and that goes in the box. Okay, so your statements go in the box, and the reason goes underneath the box. So, here's our given statement. How do I know this is true? Because it's given to us. Now, so we know that these two angles are supplementary. That's all we have, right? What can we do with that? Well, we can talk about supplementary. That's all we got, right? So that's all we we'll use. Supplementary means that the two angles add up to 180 degrees. That is the definition of supplementary. So angle ACB plus the measure of angle ACD equals 180 degrees. Definition of supplementary angle. Huh. And there it is. So the definition of supplementary angles is the measures add up to 180 degrees. So that's what we got. And where do we go from there? I don't know. So let's talk about the other given. We can say some stuff about that, right? But before we can say anything about it, we have to write it down. So we're going to write down our other given statement in this next line over here. All right. Angle EGF and angle ACD are supplementary. How do I know? Because it's given. And so I put that reason right underneath it, right there. What do I know about that? What does that tell me? Well, the same thing the other supplementary angles told me. The measures add up to 180 degrees. So that's what I'm going to put in this box. Definition of supplementary angles. All right. Definition of supplementary angles. You can abbreviate definition as DEF. You can abbreviate supplementary as SUPPL. All right. So definition of supplementary angles. Okay. So now I know that both of these, the measure equals 180 degrees when we add them up. So what can we do with that? Well, if you notice, I have this stuff here equals 180, and I have this stuff here equals 180. So I have two different things that are both equal to the same thing. And anytime you have two things that equal the same thing, the same third thing, then those first two things must equal each other. And that is the transitive property of equality. So what we know is, let's see if we can fit this in here, the measure of angle ACB plus the measure of angle ACD equals the measure of angle EGF plus the measure of angle. Uh, that did, they didn't give me a whole lot of room to write that in, did they? But there it is. So the measure of angle ACB plus the measure of angle ACD equals the measure of angle ECF plus the measure of angle ACD. And so I've got a nice little equation, and if you'll notice here... We have the measure of angle ACD on both sides of the equation, don't we? And if we have it on the both sides of the equation, that means I can subtract it out of both sides of the equation, which is what happened here. We subtracted the measure of angle ACD from both sides of the equation, so it cancels out and it's gone. 
just leaving me with the measure of angle ACB equals the measure of angle EGF. All right? And that was the subtraction property of equality. So you see our measure uh, our statement goes in the box. Reason goes under the box. All right. And now we were asked to prove that ACB is congruent to angle EGF, right? And here we have that the measures of those two angles are equal. And if the measures are equal, then the definition of congruent segments says that the, oh, sorry, not segments, definition of congruent angles says that since the measures are the same, then the angles are the same. So that's what we can put here. Definition of congruent angles. Ah, definition of congruent angles. And there it is. We have proven it. And you see with the flow chart, we can see how these thoughts flows into that. And those two come together to do this one, which means this, which means this. And there we go. All right. Now what we're going to do, we're going to do this exact same proof, but we're going to do it as a two-column proof. Okay. So here we go. Let's move this up so we can look at this as a two-column proof. Statement one, of course, we start with the given information. So let's put that down. Sorry. Angle ACD and angle ACD are supplementary. Angle EGF and angle ACD are supplementary. Both of those we know because they were given right here. Same thing we have here. Same two given statements. What do we know from that? Well, the same thing we said here, that the measures of the angles add up to 180 degrees because that is the definition of supplementary angles. All right, so let's write that down. All right, so we know that these angles add up to 180 degrees, definition of supplementary, same thing we had here, right? And now, again, we see, oh, these both equal 180 degrees, therefore they both must equal each other. All right. Transitive property. Transitive property of equality. So there it is. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, again, we're trying to prove these two angles are congruent. And hey, we can subtract those the measures from both sides. So subtraction property of equality. And last thing we need, we need since the angles are congruent, then the, since the measures are equal, that means the angles are congruent, because that's the definition of congruent angle. All right. And so you see what we have here is the exact same proof, just in different formats. In the two-column proof, it's just statement, reason, statement, reason, statement, reason, statement, reason, right? Right down the list. And these are easy to set up. They are very easy to set up, and they're very formalized. It's easy to see where you got this. It's a little bit hard down here to see, okay, where is all of this coming from, right? Because we have this given statement, which closes to statement 3. Statement 2 doesn't go to 3. Statement 2 goes to 4, and 3 and 4 together come to 5. Whereas in the flowchart proof, it's very easy to see. These two go flow into those two. Those two come together to get this one. And then it flows right down like that. So it's very easy to follow the thought process on a flowchart proof. Not as easy to set up unless you already know what you're doing. Okay. Once you already know, hey, I'm going to do this, and that's going to go into this, and that's going to go into this, then you can put your bubbles in the right spot. Whereas if you don't know in advance how this is kind of going to flow, a lot of times you have errors crossing over each other. And so they're a little bit harder to set up, but they are much easier to read and understand. Okay. Last kind we have is the paragraph proof, and this one is just already completely written out for us. We start off with, we are given that angles ACD and ACB are supplementary. We are given that angle EGF and angle ACD are supplementary, and then by the definition, of supplementary angles that means that these two add up to 180 degrees and it also means that these add up to 180 degrees right and so since that's true that means that this statement here works 
by the transitive property of equality, we know that the measure of angle ACB plus a measure of angle ACD equals measure of angle EGF plus measure of angle ACD by the transitive property of equality. So, of course, we can sub use the subtraction property of equality to tell us that the measure of angle ACB equals the measure of angle EGF. And therefore, since those measures equal, then the angle ACB is congruent to EFG by the definition of congruent angles. And here I color-coded everything so you can see where each statement in the paragraph proof comes from in the two-column proof or in the flowchart proof. So you can see that these are just three different formats, different styles of the exact same proof. All right. And so this is flowchart proofs. We have two column proofs and paragraph proofs all say the exact same thing. It's just a question of how do you want to say it? Stylistic, you know? Ah, now I did tell you we we're going to have some other theorems. So here are the other theorems. First theorem, the right angle congruence theorem. All right angles are congruent. All right. Next one, congruent supplements theorem. If two angles are supplementary to the same angle or to congruent angles, then they are congruent to each other. So angle 1 and angle 3 are both supplementary to angle 2, therefore angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. And that is actually what we just proved right here. Since these two angles were both supplementary to angle ACD, they were congruent to each other. All right. Then we have one just like it, the congruent complements theorem. If two angles are complementary to the same angle or to a congruent angles, then these two angles are congruent to each other. The linear pair postulate, which we will use a lot. If two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. And finally, the vertical angles congruence theorem, which we will also use a lot. Vertical angles are congruent. So angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. Angle 2 is congruent to angle 4. Okay, so we're just going to do some stuff with those, those theorems really quick. This won't take too long. All right, in exercise 1 and 2, we want to identify pairs of congruent angles and explain how do you know that they are congruent. So let's look at angle 1. Which angles are congruent to each other? Well, obviously, we have angle A and angle CDB are congruent to each other because... That marked that way, right? Definition of congruent angle. So let's go ahead and put that down. Angle. Okay. We also have a couple other ones we have right here. We have some vertical angles, right? So angle CDB is congruent to angle FDE because those are vertical. And this is how you can abbreviate theorem. So the vertical angles congruence theorem. That's how you abbreviate theorem. And let's see what else. Oh, well, if angle A is congruent to angle BDC and angle BDC is congruent to angle FDE, then angle A is congruent to angle FDE because of the transitive property. And let's see here. Do we have anything else? Yes, we do. We have some more vertical angles, don't we? Right here, angle CDE and angle BDE are vertical angles. All right, so there's that. Okay, now let's take a look and see what we can do with problem two. Let's see. Let's. We've got a lot of vertical angles here, don't we? Okay, so let's just list all of the vertical angles. And since they're all vertical angles, we're going to list them all at the same time. Okay, so we'll have it. Ah, so angle one is congruent to angle four, angle two congruent to angle five, angle three congruent to angle six because of vertical angle congruence theorem. All right, what else do we have congruent? Well, let's see here. We also have angle two is congruent to angle three because they're marked that way. Definition of congruent angles. And I'm going to abbreviate angles just with a little angle mark and an S. Ah. So what else? Let's see. Can we do anything else? Yes, we can. Angle 3 is congruent to angle 6. Angle 3 is congruent to angle 2. Therefore, angle 2 is congruent to angle 6. 
And if angle 2 is congruent to angle 6, and angle 2 is congruent to angle 5, angle 6 is congruent to angle 5. And both of those are due to the, the transitive property. Now notice, so we have 2, 3, 6, and 5 are all congruent to each other, but 1 and 4 aren't congruent to those. 1 and 4 are just congruent to each other because they're vertical angles, but they don't go to the other ones. So they get left out. All right, last little thing we're going to do here. We have on these, we need to find the value of x and y. So what do we have here? We have x, we have y. We don't have a whole lot of information to go with these, do we? However, let's see here. We do have something. We have 13y and this other one that has y. Notice those are across from each other there, so that means those are vertical angles, right? So they're going to equal each other. Over here, we've got the same thing. This is a, the statements with the x's are vertical angles, so those equal the same thing. And so we can just solve for either one of these. Let's see, which one do we want to solve first? What looks easier? How about the y's? Because we have pluses and stuff here. We've just got 13y all by itself right there. So let's solve for the y's. Do that first. So we have 13y equals 10y plus 24. And we know this is true because of the vertical angles congruence theorem, which says vertical angles are congruent to each other. So that means, since they're congruent, they have the same angle measures, right? So let's work this out. First, we subtract 10y from both sides. So I end up with 3y equals 24, divide both sides by 3, and y equals 8. And we had to plug it in. We didn't have to plug it in. So we can just leave it like that. Y equals 8. There it is. There's my answer. Now to find X, we actually have a couple of things we could do. One, we could do the same thing. And you know what? Let's go ahead and do it. I want to do that. And then I'll show you the other way. So we'll do this first. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to distribute that 4 in. Gives us 4X plus 24 equal to 5X plus 11. Let's move the 4's, 4x over here because we do like our x's to stay positive. Minus 11 to both sides. And x equals 13. All right. And there it is. Now, another way we could have done this is these form a linear pair, don't they? Yes, they do. And since they're a linear pair, that means these two add up to 180 degrees. So what we can do is we can take the 8 and we can plug it in. So we know what our y is there. So we can say 180 minus 13 times 8 equals 5x plus 11. And where'd my calculator go? So I'm just going to stick in there and see what that side is. 180 minus 13 times 8, 76. So 76 equals 5x plus 11. Subtract the 11 from both sides. X divide by 5, divide by 5. And once again, we have that x equals 13. All right, so you see, oops, came off the screen. So you see, we have a couple of different ways we can do this because of the linear pair postulate. All right, so what I'd like you to do, actually, I would like for you to pause the video and you work out number four. All right, hopefully you're back. And let's take a look. We're going to solve for which one we want to do first. How about y? Let's see, I don't think it matters. Let's see, they're both vertical pairs, so vertical angles, so we can do this whichever way we like. And so let's just do whatever. We'll do x first. Why not? 17x equals, right across from it, 5 times 3x plus 2. So first we've got to distribute that in. So 17x equals 15x. Don't forget to distribute to the back there. Plus 10. Move the 15x over. And we have 2x equals 10, divide by 2, and x equals 5. And you can either plug this in and 
Actually, that looks real easy right here, doesn't it? Now that looks real easy. So we have 5, 5y equals 180 minus 17x, right? But I know what x is, so 5y y equals 180 minus 17 times 5, which is what, 85, I believe? 17 times 5, just to make sure, yep, 85. So 180 minus 85 is 95. So 5y equals 95, divide by 5, and y equals 19. And if you set your y's equal to each other, since they're vertical angles, you still would have gotten y equals 19. Also works. All right. So hopefully you found that useful. A um, couple of different theorems here. New stuff. Vertical angles, congruence. Vertical angles are congruent to each other. Linear pairs add up to 180. If two angles are complementary or supplementary to a third angle, then those two angles are congruent to each other. And, of course, all right angles are congruent because they all measure 90 degrees, right? And then we have the flowchart proof. Flowchart proof, two-column proof, paragraph proof, all say the same thing, just a different way of organizing your thoughts. So, hopefully you found that useful, and I'll see you in the next video.